Okay, so we're going to get into it. I've got my three drawing materials here. I've got my white charcoal. I've got my, uh, well, this isn't really charcoal, but it says charcoal white, made by Generals, just the one I like to use. Uh, I've also got a piece of vine charcoal. This is not a whole piece. Normally it comes a little bit longer, but uh, I've been using this one for a while. It's got a nice point. And this is a standard pink eraser. Uh, I use a gray tone paper. It's just my preference. You don't have to. Um, you can pick up one of these pads for, you know, 10 bucks or so. And i uh, got plenty of pieces of paper. In. And usually what I look for in the first, when, I'm, when I start drawing, is my highest concentration, or I should say my highest contrast area. And from my angle, which is going to be slightly different for you guys, but from my viewpoint, which is looking here down, you're looking there, from my viewpoint, this in here is the darkest part here, and then behind it is the lightest part. So I've also got a few little key reflections here, and so that's where I'm going to get started. I'm going to get started right there. The reason is, is that tends to be your focal point as well, and that's something that, oops, that's something that um, I'll talk about later. That's not really the lesson for today. The lesson for today is, is handling value and understanding primary and secondary uh, light. An eraser is a drawing tool. I'm gonna to show you how and why. Now, this is not the right shape, obviously. So, I can come in here and I can shape it almost like I'm carving it out. And I can shape it a little bit better with the eraser. It's going to look like a hot mess at first. And that's not my intention, but that's just the way drawings are. You have to kind of work your way through them. Now I see a highlight here, so I'm going to just record that highlight. It's just a line. And there's another highlight up here. I'm going to record that as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to make this a bit darker. Uh, so I'm looking here and I'm saying, okay, well, I've got basically, uh, it gets kind of dark over on this side, all right? And that, that little uh, handle sticks out there. And I'm looking at distances too. I'm kind of judging it. I'm saying, well, I think, you know, in my drawing, which is almost to scale, it goes down about that far and then it comes out and it's got this sort of bump here. And then it goes out like that, okay? And then I'm using my finger to kind of pull the rest of it out. Again, I am not concerned with detail at this point. The reason is, is because detail is distracting. Don't worry about it in the beginning. Try to record the large areas of, of tonality. And don't worry about if you, may, if you mess up and you make a line in the wrong place, because the point of this exercise is not how well you can draw, but how well you can observe. Um, and that's pretty much what drawing is. So, see there's a white patch here? It goes up at an angle. I'm just going to try and capture that. But I'm not going to make it really, really light yet. I'm just going to kind of capture it a little bit. And then, there's a little bit of diffused light that works its way off that way too. So. You know, I'm going to come in here and just record some of that. And uh, right here, there's a shadow, but it's triangular in nature. The reason is, is because light's hitting that sheet and reflecting off, and it's kind of almost cutting that shadow. And then light's coming in here, and it's cutting that shadow. So if you think of light as almost shaping the darkness, that's one way to think about it. So uh, if I wanted to record that, I would just sort of, do that, and then I would say, okay, well, you know, the light's coming from this direction also, and just get that in there. Again, it, it's, not, it's not crucial to make a perfect drawing. What I'm also doing is making, looking and then making a mark, looking and then making a mark. Looking and then making a mark. You, you pick up on so much when you do that.
Now, on this side of the bug, and you probably can't see it from where you are, it's, it's actually lighter here. There's a dark line, and then there's a reflected light, or secondary light. There's this little shape here, and it's darker right there. Now, the reason for that is the light is bouncing up from here, from this direction, and it's casting, this handle is actually casting a shadow. And these are all of the little things, the crazy little things that you have to see Let's see, we got. And this is cross hatching. Cross hatching is where you're making lines. Um, and as I add more lines, that thing becomes stronger, whether it's lighter or darker, depending on what you're using. And you can blend these two together, I, I just prefer not to. Now, another thing is something is light or dark in relation to what's around it. So something can appear dark simply because it's surrounded by lighter things. So the back side of this coffee mug appears dark, not because it's actually dark, but because the background is actually lighter. So I'm gonna put that in. I'm just gonna put in some lighter tones back here. And this is again what I observe. You, you see it slightly differently, so you're probably going to think, well, why is he doing that? It doesn't look right. It doesn't look right from my angle. Well, your angle is different from mine. Your perspective is different from mine. I've got my, my primary light coming in here. I've got my secondary light here on the table. I've got my secondary light here, so these kind of reflect off each other. Uh, this is kind of a wraparound light right here. It's very intense, and it's going to be very sharp up against that, that mug. So, you know, and, and then you've got reflected light here, which isn't going to be quite as bright or as intense, but appears brighter by comparison to this darker part here. So it's all about looking at and comparing what you see in front of you. Is this lighter than that? Is that lighter than this? Is this darker than that? Is that darker than that? And, and once you start to look at things that way and see just abstract shapes, see the shapes. You know, this is a shape. That's a shape. That is a shape. There's a shape there. This table is a shape. You see everything as an individual shape. You stop seeing it as the object in front of you and you begin to be able to cue into the quality of light, and that's what all drawing and painting is all about.